Yeah, all right. Hello. Hey, Lozzie. Hey, Lozzie. How are you? Hey, folks. Hello. Yeah, the chat actually, Twitch finally fixed the chat issue. Okay, you're here. Mic check, audio check, check, check. Mic check, audio check. Light. Lighting. There we go. There we go. Good. Doing good. Okay, sweet. It is 431. Yeah, it's 431. Yeah, it started right away. Hey, Sam, Sam. Hey, Kyra. Good. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So, I'm going to try to make today really quick today. Um... Yes, hello everyone. We are we're back. This time the uh, Twitch fix the vulnerability, not the vulnerability, but the bug. Not necessarily, no, it's not a vulnerability, but it's a bug where uh, content creators could not type in any messages on the app. You can do it on the website, but not on the, mo on the uh, iOS app, or I think Android as well. And people were complaining on Reddit. Yeah. So, uh, hello everyone. Yes, I'm Ming Chow, Associate Teaching Professor at Tufts University. Uh, welcome to security. Um, I usually don't do multiple, multiple sessions of web security on Twitch, except for this year. So, this time around, I hope today will be short and sweet. Because the gist of today, the gist of today is going to talk about, okay, here we are in the year 2023. These are mistakes that you absolutely cannot make. Okay, he, yeah, there is, we're in the year 2023 right now. We all mis make mistakes. We make mistakes all the time, and that's how we learn. But... There are also some mistakes that you absolutely can cannot make in this day and age because it's just so dumb. And unfortunately, I can't tell you how many times we have seen such issues still being made, such issues being made even up to this day. I want to start off with one that I absolutely love because it seems just so dumb, but it's just ridiculous how many people still make this mistake up to this day. So here we are, this is the CWE Top 25. Most dangerous software weaknesses. So far, we have covered number two, cross-site scripting, number three, SQL injection, Number five, operating system uh, command injection. We've done 16 as well. And if you actually take a look, take a gloss at this list, there's just some vulnerabilities that are just plain dumb that you just cannot make up to this day. I want to start off with number eight. The improper limitation of a path name to a restricted directory. The path traversal problem. Okay. So, let me ask each and every one of you here. How do you actually go back a directory in the command line? Now, how do you do that? That's the question. Let's start off with that. You have some familiarity. There you go. Okay. It's amazing. Hey, Gio. Hey, Gio hey, De Rossi. Hey, Rose Phoenix. It's cool that, hey, Twitch didn't censor the dot dot. Okay. You see the dot dot. You know that. It goes dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash. Yeah. Hey, Frog Stomp. How are you? How are you, Frog Stomp? Okay. But what if, and so the reason why I asked you how you go back a directory is let's take a look at what CWE22 is. CWE22 is the improper limitation of a path 
named to a restricted directory. Um, and so the description is many file operators are intended to take place within a restricted directory. By using special elements such as a dot dot and slash separators, attacker can escape the outside of a restricted location to access files or directory that are elsewhere on the system. One of the most special elements is a dot dot sequence. Okay. All right. So path traversal, directory traversal, they're both the same. They both still exist. So let's see if we can do uh, do an example. Let's see if we can do an example of one. Okay, this is kind of one. This is a sort of a variation of one. So let's go to, you can play along. 34.67.36.57, the honeypot. And go to Mutilidae. Okay, hey, hey, handles. You can do that as well. So what Mutilidae is, is, is a deliberately vulnerable web application that you can all play and mess around with to learn more about security. But click on login. You notice the URL. You notice the URL now is 34.67.36.57 slash Mutilidae slash index.php question mark page equals login not php and here we go now type whatever you want in there let's do a dot dot slash 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 let's see what you get we got a warn we got a warning and a fatal error here well, this is bad enough because we have an in, we have information disclosure here. This ain't good. This is stuff should not be happening up to this day. Okay, you can do more. But what happened if you put in any file that you want, like a slash etc slash passwd? And there you go. So, your path traversal here. But you also have another problem, which we'll get to next. Okay, so if I copy the URL and I paste it to something like, oh, let's say Visual Studio Code. Okay, dot dot slash are totally legit. Or you can do what Handel said is a percent two e percent two e percent two f that kind of stuff. You can do that as well. Like this is not okay. Okay, so. This is an example of directory traversal. You can also, doesn't necessarily have, you don't necessarily have to do um, after a, in a query string as well, too. There are, unfortunately, you won't believe this shit. It doesn't work here. It doesn't work on this system, but if you do mutility dot dot slash dot dot uh, dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash what is that going to evaluate to if you go to 34.67 slash mutility slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash what is that going to do what should that do This is totally a legal URL. That's totally fine. It's going to the home directory, as Lawsy said. You're just going to go to the home page. That's correct. But what if I told you that, unfortunately, there are still systems out there that if you keep on doing dot, dot, slash, 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 and then you do etc slash PASSWD, 
Imagine if, yeah, I mean, Lawsy, you said it correctly. It's, it's going to go to the home directory. But what if I told you that back in, like, you know, there are still some systems out there that you can just do that. No, not even, no query string necessarily whatsoever. You hit the enter key, and it actually will render the et slash etc password file for you. You don't believe me. This is one of the most craziest incidents I've ever seen. This is a little older. It's actually now like over five years old, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's over five years old now. But um, I remember being on an email list. So I used to be on Seclist. Uh, not Seclist. Um, is it Seclist? I used to be on, no, it's, 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 the, it's, it's run by Nmap. Is it called Nmap? Seclist? I think it is. Yeah, seclist.org. I used to be on this email list, seclist.org. And what is good, it's it's not only to give you training information on security, but it gives you a ton, and I mean a ton of email per day on vulnerabilities. And I remember one day I checked my email and I got a vulnerability. There's a vulnerability of a directory traversal and a dishwasher. And I was like, what? How is, like, is that a thing? Well, sure enough, here you go. This is, like, crazy. This happened in 2017. Miele, who is one of the best companies, where well, they make solid products. They make absolutely solid products like dishwashers and vacuum cleaners. Some of the best home appliances in the world they make. But they made an awful mistake by having a tra directory traversal in a, their dishwasher. Well, they went all for Internet of Things, had an Internet-connected dishwasher, gave it a web server, and now, well, there you go. CVE-2017-17-1. I want to find this, if this is still, this should be, cve.org. CVE 2017, uh, 7240, yep, assigned by MITRE. Uh, an issue was discovered in the Melee Professional PST-10 devices, a corresponding embedded web server Typically listens on port 80 and is prone to the directory traversal attack. If <laughs> an attacker may be able to exploit this issue to get sensitive information in a subsequent attack. So you do all this to proof of concept in the uh, admin and the uh, admin interface URL and just do a whole bunch of dot dot slash and you find, eventually get to slash gt slash shadow. It shows up. Here you go. Here it is, now proving it to yourself using a basic HTTP GET fetch, boom, from whichever IP address the dishwasher has on your network to reveal the shadow, uh, uh, this is not the, this is not the PASSWD file, this is the shadow password file on his file system. That's pretty damn sad, okay, that is pretty damn sad. Directory traversal attack, let's, Hackers and miscreants access directories and data that they really shouldn't be able to reach, such as sensitive configuration files and similar stuff. So the good news is a lot of modern web servers, a lot of modern web servers, like Apache, Nginx, they don't allow this stuff anymore. I mean, that's just this is just a plain bad, a five alarm fire. Okay. Um, this doesn't happen on most, like, of the enterprise, the popular and common web server software that you use and download. But if you build, like, a custom one, such as, like, Internet of Things stuff, that's a different story. Here it is. You can use a traverse vulnerability to gain foothold or potentially hijack the machine and infest it with malware. There you go. So, directory traversal is still a thing, and it's, it's still a thing. He said, no, no. Come on. This stuff shouldn't be happening here in 2023, let alone in 2017. This is just bad.
Appliance makers, stop trying to connect your stuff to the network. You're no good at it. Yeah, that's a good way of putting at it. Okay. So, directory traversal should not happen at all these days. I mean, it shouldn't. I mean, that's an absolute, like, you're just plain dumb if you actually make that mistake. There is an equally bad vulnerability that's along the same lines as directory traversal that affect web application these days, which is equally as bad. It's a very similar, similar style. So now let's actually go to the damn, play with the damn vulnerable web application. And the username is uh, admin, and the password is password, all lowercase. There it is, a damn vulnerable web application. Go to file inclusion. Go to the file inclusion exercise. This is still extremely common and equally sad even up to this day. Very similar, if not identical, to the vulnerability that you saw on uh, Mutilidae, where you have question mark page equal include.php. Now, if I click on file one, I get file one.php. Oh shit, I just revealed my IP address to the world. Oh well. Sorry about that, but that's okay. File two. File three. Nope, oh, I see my IP address. I'm a host today, yada yada yada. I'm using Firefox. Oh well. So. Where's the vulnerability? What can you do? Anyone? Where's the vulnerability? What is it? So this is a... I think it's a very, very, very closely related with directory traversal. Very closely related. But it's now in the form of something called file inclusion. And there are two types of file inclusion. There is a local file inclusion, and there is also a remote file inclusion. And I want to show you, this is a presentation that I did. Yeah, here it is. This is a presentation I did for a certain bank earlier, uh, a couple months ago. And this, this blew my frickin' mind from Akamai Security Blog, File Inclusion. The threat vector driving the most growth in web application and API attacks is local file inclusion. These attacks are on a massive upswing with a 193% year-over-year growth with a three-time surge from 2021. And this article, believe it or not, I'm going to copy this URL. I can't make this up. I'm going to paste it here, and here it is. That's the article, April 18, 2023. What's the vulnerability, folks? There is, essentially, there's two and one here. There's two types of, but there's two vulnerabilities. There's a local file inclusion vulnerability, and there's a remote file inclusion vulnerability. Anyone, did anyone mess with this yet, anything yet? Anyone mess with it? Anyone get anything? Anyone? Hello. Yeah, okay, Golden Energy, your thing got censored. But what if you did this? If you do page equals and you just remove it. Found it. Page equals include file name cannot be empty. There's your vulnerability on line 36 on index.pf. So, all right, so fail opening for inclusion. So it's really looking for a file of some sort. 
either local or remote? What if you did? Good question, Lazzy. I don't know. I am not responsible for that, but I hear a lot of things get censored on Twitch. That's a good question. I don't know. I, I hear a lot of things get censored. So, can you throw in slash ETC slash PASSWD? Yeah, you sure you got that? There you go. That's no bueno. It's not good. So, we just included the slash ETC slash PASSWD page. This is a file on the server. Okay? So, this is what is called a local file inclusion. Local file inclusion is including a file that is currently local to be on the server. That is local on the server. That exists on 34.67.36.57. Oh, yeah. Let me go home for a second. Okay, this is an index.php page. But now I want to go back to file inclusion. But what happened if I do dot dot slash index.php? Nope, that didn't happen. What happened if I do dot dot slash dot dot index.php? There you go. Yeah, you can do that. There you go. How about if I do slash bar slash www slash html slash index.html that's the home page of the uh, the iranian hacker home page can i do that well yeah hacked there you go look at that but you also this vulnerability you are not just limited to just files that exist on the server. What if you did this? HTTPS colon slash at www.hub.edu. Watch what happens. This is the remote file inclusion. Bing! Notice the URL is 34.67.36.57 slash dbwa slash vulnerability slash fi slash and then of course the query string page equals https colon slash slash www.tufts.edu Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. This is what is called remote file inclusion because you're executing because it's going to look for a page, a file on HTTP or HTTPS. Hey, since we have to uh, uh, pay homage to our overlords, what happened if I can I just do uh, page equals HTTPS colon slash twitch.tv? Bing! Ooh! Interesting how that failed on me. I guess not. Hmm. Okay, but what happened if I do HTTPS www.google.com? Oh yeah, look at that. Still works. Hey, what happened if I actually do uh, uh, if I do uh, a Google search like have I been TWNED? If I do a search, can I do that here? Ah, uh, interesting. So you can actually now dig deep. Interesting how the URL is all dug in here of the Google search. So it's not going to Google.com, but it thinks that 34.67.57 is really Google.com now. It's, it's the Google search engine. Huh, interesting. What happened if I do HTTPS? Uh, it was a site I had in mind that would be really good to put in. Um, oh, what's that site? That's really good. I forget what it is. See if I can just copy all this URL in here. In the page. Still going. Still going. Uh-oh. No, 
but my network is still on. Hmm. All right, looks like the server's all bugged right now. Yep, server's definitely bugged. Oh, did you guys take it down all of a sudden? Uh-oh, this ain't good. Oh, boy. I think this got just cracked out. You folks are still there? You folks alive? I hope my internet didn't get messed up here. You, you folks are still there, right? All right. Yeah, yeah, you're still here. Okay. You already, we already did this. Here's the deal. Just a nice review. Local file inclusion. Remote file inclusion. Directory traversal. They're all injection attacks. Sanitize user input. Never trust user input. I mean, that's the message. You won't believe... So earlier today, a former student, I want to give out a shout out to Tom Hendrickson. Tom, congratulations on all your work. Uh, he took the security class and one of the best classes I ever had was fall 2016. That was, a, that was a semester in the fall where every wonky thing that you would have imagined that's known, like, um, we had a denial of service attack, we had election and fake news everything so congratulations tom like who cares uh, if i can access why do we care about uh about remote file injection well that's a good question why do you care it really the issue is here the real issue is it's just well you have a couple of problems Dale, you have a, you asked a great question, like, why do we care about file inclusion? Why do we care about file, uh, remote file injection? Or remote file inclusion? Like, who cares if I can access it through DVWA? You only care about remote injection if you put the file on the client, on the client side. Well, here's the issue, is you take a look at this. Oh, Bank of America, that was a site I wanted to use, www. The real issue is, if you have remote file inclusion, well, in this case, it looks really weird because this actually looks like the full Bank of America website. So the problem is, one big problem why, Dale, you want to care about remote file injection? Well, there's really two. The first one's dumb. I mean, first of all, you shouldn't be doing this anyway. But the second one is, you take a look at the URL. And here we are. This is the Bank of America website. This is the Bank of America website as it is. You're getting the full bank. This looks like the Bank of America. It smells like the Bank of America. But that's not the official website. There you go. And you notice that the URL is not H is not HTTPS colon slash at www.bankofamerica.com. It is 34.67.36.57. That's the problem. So the problem is, is that you notice that the URL is not, like, this looks like the Bank of America site. It smells like the Bank of America site, but it's not the Bank of America site. If it was the Bank of America site, it would start with HTTPS colon slash at www.bankofamerica.com. But in this case, the URL is 34.67.36.57. So if I enter the uh, user ID Dale Jacobs on the Bank of America website, and the connection is not secure, I say, ho, ho. I'll just say, like that. And I hit the login. Really, it also boils down to, oh, shit. There you go. And so now we have a potential of serving fraudulent content. Okay, ghost website of Fizzy of Fizzy of uh, two twenty B. Yeah. Okay. So it's just this is just extremely bad programming that will also lead to a lot of fraudulent content. Okay. Also, and this is what I like to joke with people about why remote file inclusion or injection is an issue. 
So basically, you can. Can I go to Four Chan? I know I'll probably get banned if I actually. But if I go to like, um, the other way is the other way I can think of is, um, if there is a remote file inclusion or remote file injection vulnerability, you can actually search. <laughs> you can go to like the sketchiest websites. You pick one, pick any one that you want, and on that sketchy website log uh, or n, they're going to see the IP address as not your computer, but also but the server where uh, but the server of where the file was included from. In this case, it's thirty four dot sixty seven dot thirty six dot fifty seven. So it's almost like a really fake. It's like a fake web proxy that you can use for like really sketchy web browsing. So I hope that answers your question, Dale. Okay. Well, we can also do a search of wireless. Actually, why is remote file inclusion bad? Ah, uh, let's go to Improva. Yes, um, attacking uh, vulnerabilities in web applications and then dynamically referencing external script. The perpetrator's goal was to exploit the referencing function in an application to upload file. They can do Upload malware from a remote URL from uh, within a different domain. The kind of the consequences of a successful RFI attack include information theft, compromised web server, and a site takeover that allowed for content modification. Basically, it's a way of saying what I just said moments ago. Okay, and where he did local file inclusion and remote file inclusion. As a result, malicious characters upload directly slash uh, path traversal attacks are allowed for. Perpetrators can then directly upload malware to a compromised system as, a, as opposed to retrieving it. Yeah. Okay, we've already done this. we already done this example before. All right, so Dale, hopefully that answers your question and then some. Well, once again, a web app, uh, you, yeah, some people have done some work on that. Okay. So, I want to bring up this was, today's the 26th, right? Yeah. I want to introduce you to my uh, student, uh, former student and friend, Tom Hendrickson. I want to give a shout out to Tom. Congratulations. Tom is a security researcher at Praetorian Cybersecurity, praetorian.com. And he published this article today on compromising F5 big IP with smuggling, CVE-2023-46747. Okay. Uh, and they identified a few zero-day vulnerabilities that are like, you know, they you know, identified a few zero-day vulnerabilities. Some parts of this article is redacted because they're going to release the information a little bit later on. Uh... As a result of our research, they were able to identify authentication bypass that issue that led to a complete compromise of an F5 system with traffic management user interface. If you don't know what F5 is, F5 system, what do they do? Ah, here it is. They do, uh, like... Yeah, they do application security appliances, application and cloud security stuff. But take a look. Recent F5 vulnerabilities. This is a what just he sent me this article earlier today and I have glossed through this and I was like this is actually perfect and I was not only laughing but I was sad. And I was saying, in this perfect timing of this, as this, this article just came out today, uh, that they released, you take a look at the recent F5 vulnerabilities. Attackers in 2020 recently exploited two major F5 CVEs in the wild. Briefly, this was an issue where the Apache HTTPD service interpreted the slash dot dot semicolon slash characters in a URL differently than the Apache Tomcat service on the back end. So this is sort of, this is very, very much like a, well, this is not only 
seemed like this is a directory traversal issue, but it also seemed like a content injection as well, too. And you have a semicolon slash manager slash HTML. So the point being is directory traversal, um, it's, and, and, and also command injection, they're both still a damn thing. And they have another proof of concept here. So the idea of using special characters like dot dot and slash and semicolon is still a thing up to this day. Yeah, it's still a thing. Okay. All right. How are we doing with this mess? Well, yeah, I guess I can do another fun exercise. I think the I think the damn vulnerable web application I have is completely down right now. Is it? Is it now? Nope, it's still up. But so we've done through directory traversal, local file inclusion, remote file inclusion. Now let's talk about file uploads. <laughs> let's go to file uploads. Click an image to upload. Oh, okay, shoot. Squinting fry. Let me get the picture of squinting fry. Open image and a new tab. Here we go. Save images fry dot jpeg. Browse. Thanks, hard. Upload. <gasps> All right, hackable. So now this gets interesting. All right, the file got uploaded. It's now available in dot dot slash dot dot slash hackable uploads fry dot jpeg. Really? Can I do that? So what happens if I change the URL? Bing! TV WA slash hackable slash upload slash fry dot jpeg. There you go. So the image got successfully uploaded. Also, we have an open index here. This is not good. You have an in open index like this. This ain't good at all. This is a vulnerability when you can see a complete file listing of all the uploads. Let's get a really risque picture of, oh, all right, let's take this, this one. Did you call me Carmen? I'm just gonna upload Carmen. What? Why did I not get uploaded? Let's upload Fry again. That's strange. Anyway. Can I upload this presentation? Uh, let's try this again. Hmm. All right, can I upload a PDF? Nah, let's not do that. Kermit the Frog. Well, oh, that's too big. Let's get maybe it has to do with file size or something. Ooh, here it is. Save image as Kermit. Dot. JPEG. Yeah. Oh, it's a PNG. Okay, let's do that. Hmm. 
interesting. Image file was not uploaded. That was weird. And anyway, so we uploaded Fry, but why didn't the other P the other file did not get uploaded? Oh, and anyway, that was that's not the point of the file upload vulnerability. But can anyone think of something that can go horribly wrong with a file upload? Now it said upload to choose an image to upload. No file selected. Let's go to the view source. Can we move it to the uploads folder? No. Can we upload it to Yes. So now you notice that this website is all, you know, DVWA is all PHP based. But what happened if you upload a PHP file? Funny, I don't know why we can, we can't under, we can't upload Kermit. I don't know why. That's pretty dumb. But can we upload haha.php? What the fuck? That works. dot dot slash hackable slash upload ha ha dot php uploader okay oh hi there you go so i uploaded a script but that's where the problem comes in here is where the vulnerability is i just uploaded this file ha ha dot php it's a php shell now, you don't need to be a ninja to read PHP, but it, what it's looking for, it's looking for a, um, it's looking for a command in the query string that starts with the key CMD. So CMD is going to be um, requested from the HTTP GET parameters. And whatever you send in as a value for CMD, this haha.php is going to execute that command. So take a look. So notice that I got haha.php successfully uploaded. I just proved that moments ago. But what about if I do question mark cmd equals, give me a command. Give me a command like ls minus la slash. Watch what happens. Bing. This is what you call a web shell. Now I have basically gained access to the server. 34.67.36.57. Now I'm going to give you another command. Uh, let's say echo hi. There you go. Echo. Like Dale Jacobs. Oh yeah. Uh, let's say cat slash etc slash passwd. There you go. You can do any command that you want now. Do an ls slash etc. Ooh. How about more? Do a cat slash etc. Spin bash. You can now take a look at any file on the system that you want. LS home. The honeypot. M chow. Uh, honeypot. Cowrie. Uh, Readme.md. Oh. So you can do any, nope, no read me there. Requirements, uh, .txt, nope. Oh, not an ls, do a cat. Nope, cat, cat. What am I doing today? There you go. These are all the requirements for the honeypot. Oh, 
Oh, readme.rst, okay. Yeah. There you go. I can do anything that I want on the server now because I uploaded haha.php. So what's the point here? The point being is a file upload phone. We're dealing with file uploads. Where he did this, where he did that. Here's the problem with file uploads. If you don't val if the server do not validate things like the name, the file type, the content, the size, etc., you got bad news. You got bad things coming. So this vulnerability also belongs to a class of injection vulnerabilities. Even worse, as I just demonstrated, if you can upload a file and then it can be run and executed. Which is exactly what I did in the training. I uploaded a PHP shell. This is a PHP shell that I was just executing all sorts of commands on. And so, like, how do you defend against this? How do you defend against file upload vulnerabilities? Well, again, it's always about validating inputs. But you also want to go a little bit deeper. You want to check the file extension. You want to check the file type. You also want to set maximum file size limits for each file upload. So you don't want to have people upload, like, a 30 gigabyte movie or something. Also, you want to change the name of the file name to not conflict with other files and uploads that are on the system. The best thing to do really is if you're going to be dealing with file uploads, make sure that the files get uploaded to what is called a content delivery network like an Akamai or an AWS or um, what's that other one um, from Google, Firebase, to store uploads. Because they have system designed solely for file uploads. And they've got it down to a T where, oh, things are not going to get run as an executable. Okay? All right. I'm going to do one more thing. And this one is to absolutely, there's absolutely no excuse for you folks to do. And I'm going to repeat. If you ever make this mistake, if you make this mistake, it's like it's, gets to a point where it's unforgivable. Here's the unforgivable mistake. I'll give you a hint. It's on this page here. But I'm actually now going to have uh, going to give you all a kind of a quiz. I'm going to have you all look at a piece of code and you tell me everything that is wrong with it. There you go. Tell me. Here is a actual live and running piece of Java code. This works. This absolutely works. It's only 25 lines long. Really 23 if you don't include the comments. Here you go. Tell me everything that's wrong. Also, just to also let you know, next week we're not going to have Twitch. We're not going to have a Twitch stream. So I'm going to start off with this example in two weeks. Because this is going to be a segue into the next topic. But I want you to take a look at this piece of code. You don't even need, this is all written in Java. You don't need to be a Java expert at all. You don't even need to know Java at all. Well, it'll help a little bit. But seriously, you don't even need to know Java well. What are the vulnerabilities? Ooh, mystery underscore file said user input directly concatenated onto the SQL query. Yep. That is line number what, 13? Line number 13? That is mixing of data and mixing of code. That is SQL injection galore. You have a SQL injection galore problem. Mystery underscore flower. Yes, yes, yes. What else? What else? What other vulnerabilities do you see? Ah, Kyra. Nah, it's not always wise to print out exact errors. Why not? Kyra, can you explain more about exactly what you said? Why is it not wise to print out exact errors? And what? And furthermore, furthermore, what's the better alternative? Kyra, line number twenty. 
Kyra said it's not sure it's always, it never is wise. No, no, no. Kyra, it's never wise to print out exact errors. Never okay, especially to users. But what's the alternative? There is, and there are alternatives. Printing out errors gives the attacker's information about the server and the fire so far. Better alternative is usually is to log the error and to say, yeah. Wow, that's pretty well written. You sure this is not a uh, chat GPT? That's exactly it. Printing out errors. Yeah, give attackers. All right, Cheetah Rossi, there you go. Okay. So, wait a minute. So, Linda and Gita Rossi said, I guess, two different things. Two, two of the same things. Okay, so we have credentials. It's also hard-coded. The username and password are plain text and not protected. Oh, yeah. Four and five. This is a big one. I just want to let you all know that it is not okay. And this, this is... It is not okay in this day and age to use hard-coded credential information in a source code. Why is that? Well, number one is what Linda said, is that the username and password are not protected and in plain text. You can see it right away. The other problem with hard-coded passwords is they're hard-coded. You won't be able to change them at all. And here is the problem, and that is a serious problem. CWE-798, the use of hard-coded credentials, number 18. Rank last year was down 15, down 3. I have a feeling it may go up again, this use of hard-coded credentials. The product contained hard-coded credentials such as password, a cryptographic key, which is used for its own uh, inbound authentication and outbound communication to external components. Okay, hard-coded Credential typically create a significant hole that allows an attacker to bypass authentication that or that has been configured by the product administrator. And you can't even fix it, too. And then the worst thing is, if you can read client-side systems with hard-coded password passwords and even more threats since the extraction of a password from binary is usually pretty damn simple. This is what we're going to do after the CTF game. Like, this is, like, not okay. Not in this day and age. But there's also another problem here with line number four and five. There's a subsequent problem. There's a subsequent problem with lines numbers four and five. That is almost equally as bad as hard-coded passwords. Kent, the username. Actually, it is, uh, coincidentally, it is also on the 2023 CWE Top 25. You can make a case for that. Anyone? Logs everyone in as a root user. Yep, that's it. The username is root. That's bad. It's going to access the database. Or it's going to make a connection to a database as a root user. Mm-hmm. No, it's not real root on a system, but real root on the database system. In this case, it's MySQL. What happened if you're root on uh, any system? Like, I, I don't care whether you're root on a system or root on a product, you're going to have super user access to that system. In this case, it's root access to MySQL. So if you root access to MySQL, you have database, you have access to every single database on the system. I mean, in a lot of places, there could be like dozens and dozens of databases on a system, not just one, usually dozens. So if you're the root user, you have access to all of them, and you're going to have, yeah. So what's the solution? What can you do? What should you do? How do you prevent the hard-coded, what should you do instead of hard-coded username and passwords? Anyone know?
What's the alternative? The simple answer. Anyone know how to store credentials like this safely? And not hard coding? The root issue, the, the username issue is a little more, more easier to solve because you just want to make sure that when you create databases, you give separate users. User created, yeah. Minnow said user created username and passes. That's one. That eliminates the root issue. Dale Jacob, not salt and hash, not in this case. For password storage for a system, what you want to do is never hard code encode username and passwords. If you're going to make like need credentials for things like oh database connection, I'll just show you. Take these out. But or take this out. Make sure you don't store username and passwords in code but you would do something like uh, store the username and password into system memory then you write code to go and get the username and the password from the system memory or you can use an API key or you can that's another good idea Linda but the common way is to use something called environment variables so I think Heroku has a really good article. Configuration and configuration bars. Aha. Uh -huh. Here you go. And you can do this on any system. For example, an age and a staging may use different AS3, meaning they also need different credentials for those buckets. Okay. What you can do is you can use on something like Heroku, if you're going to be deploying apps to the Heroku platform, which really is, is just do a Git push and just send your app for, to, for deployment. You just set what is called configuration, uh, configuration, and you do Heroku config set the key and then the value. In this case, it actually sets the key as a GitHub underscore username, all in caps, as the key and the value of Joe Smith. Then you can also do that for the password as well too. Again, the username and password are set into, yeah, the key and the values are set in memory. And then when you try to need to access them, uh, it depends on what programming language you're using. I think they're using Ruby on Rails here. So it's usually like ENV, the name of the key on your system. ENV, the name of the key on your system. Ah, here it is for Java. For Java, you can access keys stored in memory by system.getenv. Name of the key. That's all you got to do. So I can do something like something like that. System.getenv. So that's fine. I mean, but in this case, if I make this change, this is great because now you're not going to see the username and password, the actual username and password that's being used. All the username and credential information are stored in system memory. And you can do this from on any system, Mac OS, Linux, Windows, doesn't matter. You can set environment variables. Okay. But using the system get env is way better than this crap right here there are other issues vulnerabilities such as using way too much of a library like in this case of java.sql.asterisk which is everything in a java.sql library that's not great the other vulnerable the other issue the other vulnerable this is actually a real bug ultimately a vulnerability because you can shut down this whole app is when you open up a database connection when you open up a file, when you open up anything, you also need to close it as well. Okay. So yeah, directory reversal, file upload, local file inclusion, remote file inclusion, and of course, hard-coded passwords. 
this is not oh these are not okay in this day and age unfortunately you may be asking yourself do people still hard code credentials into products and stuff yep look no further than cisco There you go. This was in October 17 of 2023, folks. In Cisco products. Over 10,000 network backed uh, devices backdoor to an unpatched zero day. An unknown actor, threat actor, is exploiting the vulnerability to create admin accounts. Wait, is this it? Oh, wait a minute. Is this, I think this is... It just, just happened. Wait, wait. Did I get the right one? Three days? A Cisco vulnerability. Ah, here it is. I might have had the wrong one. No, this is the right one. There you go. Yep, this was October 11. We've been serving off now. Never mind. Nope. All uh, right, hard-coded password found in Cisco Enterprise Software again, May, 2000, May 17, 2018. 2018. Why is it, yeah, but why is it the Cisco vulnerability? There's no Cisco vulnerability in the emergency responder. The presence of static user credentials for the root account that are typically reserved for use during a development, the attack, yeah, I know that, but why can't why is this hidden all of a sudden from cisco why is this not available what the hell card coded password they didn't take this they didn't take this away did they oh yeah here it is cisco fixes hard coded root credentials in emergency october 4 2023 Cisco released a security update to fix a CER vulnerability that allowed attackers log into unpatched system using hard coded credentials. There you go. CVE 2023 201101 security law flaw allows unauthenticated attackers to access a targeted device using the root account, which had default static credentials that could not be okay. But Again, why can't I, why is this advisory not available to me, to us? Yeah, I just got a bleeping computer instead. Yeah, use this one. Cisco say how to go to credential weaknesses that a lot. Yeah, okay. But the problem is, is this is not the first time. Cisco has done this many times uh, with hard coded credentials. Even in the year 2023, like, so what the fuck? Well, I don't know why. Do Windows have a very, okay. They have a zero day, but yeah. So, this stuff should not be happening in the year 2023, but here we are. And that's all I got, folks. So, we're not going to be on Twitch next week because of the Capture the Flag game. The, the semester Capture the Flag game, the de facto final exam. We will be back in two weeks to continue talking about really, really, really bad code. And then we do code scanning and static analysis. Thanks, all. Yeah. Like, really? Why are we still here? It's, it's amazing that we're still in this business. It's like, what the hell? It just never ceases to amaze me.
But then again, perhaps this is all keeping us in business right now. Unbelievable. Unreal. Thank you all. Yeah, stop mumbling now.